Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Podowitz, CEO and founder, and today continue the conversation, part three of a three-part series with the lovely and informative and very caring Maureen Longoria, who is the CEO and co-founder of Live Now Relocation. Welcome back, Maureen. Oh, thank you, Julie. It's a treat to be here. I appreciate it. So, it, you, you know, uh, making this more of a, a series here because there's so much to talk about, but you mentioned something when we were on break, Maureen, about uh, a not pleasant topic, but that's uh, people who um, may take advantage or prey upon our older adults or our seniors. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, you know, a lot of times the senior hasn't sold a home or moved in 20, 30, even 50 years, Julie, that's not uncommon, really. And, um, and so things have changed a lot since then, right? And that in and of itself is scary to have to mm-hmm. then all of a sudden procure these different suppliers for yourself, not knowing. You watch HGTV and you see it, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, does my house have to look like that to put it on the market? You know, so there's, there's that aspect of it, but there's also um, times when a senior can be taken advantage of. Rogue movers are more prevalent than ever before. And what a rogue mover does is gives you an estimate and they'll lowball it. And they'll give it to you on you know, just over the phone or over the internet and they lowball it. And a senior might, because they t- can tend to be frugal, take that estimate. And what happens is they come and they do start to pick up your stuff, but then they hold it hostage and you have to pay three times what you would have paid or two times what you would have paid if you used a reputable mover. This is not uncommon. And like I said, oh the pandemic, it became even more rampant. The reason it became more rampant is because we had less um, labor, uh, less drivers, and we had a huge uptick after that slowdown because of the pandemic. Then all of a sudden we had a huge uptick. And I talked to um, the senior living community that said last summer, they literally had, they were at a 50% occupancy and they were excited because they were getting people to move in. But guess what? People were waiting two months to move in because they couldn't get a mover in the summer. So oh. these are like real life problems that sure. um, senior living industry is facing. Seniors not being able to find movers in the summer and or worse yet, taking a, a low ball offer from a mover that's a rogue mover that holds their stuff hostages. How, how does a community deal with that? And then on top of it, the real estate market has been hot, 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 as everybody knows, which also puts the senior in a position, okay, how do I deal with, if I get a bidding war, how does that work? And multiple offers. And um, and so many times a realtor will come in their home and say, well, we need to paint your cabinets white. We need to redo your hardwood floors and rip up the carpet here. And that stops a moving attract because the seniors, well, well, I don't want to live through that. Uh, You know what I'm saying? These are the sort of things that happen when there isn't somebody involved to manage the providers that are working with the senior to make sure they're not going in and telling them they have to do $20,000 worth of work before they put their home on the market. Or if maybe it would benefit them coming up with other solutions, like we can give you a bridge loan. Let's get you moved into the community and we're gonna take those home improvement um, services that we offer and we're gonna spruce up the house and those costs will come off of your closing statement. Now that's a solution that will work for the senior, um, but a senior wouldn't know to even look for those sort of resources right. and services. Um, but on top of all that, um, just this week, an article came out in Inman. Um, it's the local real estate publication, not local, nationwide. It's, it's an amazing publication. It's for anyone that's involved in real estate gets it. And they were saying that consumer sentiment is really down when it comes to moving. Um, mm-hmm. It's the lowest um, uh, percentage of people actively thinking that they're going to move since 2010. So uh, real estate is hitting the skids right now. It, it might bounce back again, but right now it's really slowing down. And so what's that going to mean for senior living communities if it does start to slow down? What will that look like? Because right now we've been enjoying the quick turnover other than the van line issues that are out there right now. So anyway, I think it's just really important to note that um, seniors usually haven't been in a position to procure those sort of suppliers in a really long time. And you know, really don't even know what questions to ask them to ensure that they're going to do a good job for them. Yeah, I think it just really goes back to Maureen continuing, you know, from the sales side, 
the sales is all about relationships. You know, this is a moving, choosing to leave home, choosing to live in a community, uh, or feeling like we didn't have the choice, but having to do it is traumatic, very emotional, a very high level sale, as I say, because it's logistically complicated. It costs, you know, there's, there's, there's definite cost involved and then the emotional side of it. So the, to, you know, to take care of is our best in, you know, we're all looking out for the best interest of our customer, the yeah. older adult, their families, um, to continue that, right, with partnerships, you know, in the, in your local community and in, you know, outside of your community, if you will, to really, to align, right, align with businesses and people who have the same or similar integrity, and you know the similar um, in, in, in same intentions, right? Absolutely. Another example is um, it's become common practice these days for real estate agents to charge a marketing fee in their contracts, an upfront marketing fee. Um, that's something that can be negotiated in corporate relocation. We would never pay that, but most people wouldn't know that they can negotiate that um, by having somebody that's educated in this uh, process that can be negotiated out of their contracts. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really um, tapping into the expertise of people that know how to get the best service and the best price um, for these processes. Wow, no, I didn't know that either. You know, and and you don't have to be even having stressful, you just don't have to be an older adult or I, you know, I guess I'm an older adult, but you're, you know, it's we're when so much is coming at us at any time, especially when we're stressed or we experience loss uh, of multiple losses, and then we've got all this other stuff happening. Who's reading fine print? I never even heard of that. Um, and so we, it's just going back to um, uh, that integrity, looking out for, understanding uh, what is available to support the move, a successful move, right? Because this is, we're all about growing occupancy, helping maximum number of people and families consider senior living because such a low percentage of agent income qualified will even consider it and even a lower percentage end up moving in. So we want to do everything in our power that we you know, possibly can control to make that experience positive for those who are moving in or have chosen to move in. Absolutely. And that, that applies to the memory care and assisted living, right? So yeah. while mom needs to get moved in, you know, sometimes the hesitation from the family is, well, how are we going to pay for it? We can't pay for it until we sell mom's house. Um, what's that look like? We know we need to get mom right. moved in, but we're going to have to go through her house and get it on the market. Now they're overwhelmed when there are solutions out there for that as well, you know, where we could give them a bridge loan and then help them through that process. And, uh, you know, that's another big aspect of this is that the families that have to manage it because uh, mom is moving into assisted living or memory care and can't be part of the process, right, becomes a huge burden on them. Um, my husband's in wealth management. He recently had a family. Um, the mom passed away a couple of years ago and the, the dad had to move into memory care unexpectedly. Um, daughter in Michigan, son in um, Afghanistan in special ops and a son in Utah. And the, actually the uh, son in Afghanistan flew in, the son from Utah flew in to go through the house, find a, do all this work, right? Um, right. And, and then they have to communicate with each other. Like, so now you've got the emails flying back and forth and the text messages, right? Um, if they had just had our app available to them, it would have all been in there for them. You know, the broker's market analysis would be in there. The moving estimate would be in there. They can assign tasks to each other. They can look at the calendar to see when the movers are coming. Um, it's all there so that there's one place for them to go and they don't have to have this back and forth all the time. And, um, you know, so for assisted living and memory care communities to be able to offer that sort of service, I think just speaks volume to um, how they'll care for mom uh, if they care that much about helping the family. Sure, sure. And so is this, you mentioned an app. How do I get the app? So the Good Move app is only available through our service offerings. It's just part of our services that we offer. Oh, I see. Okay. And then how do I engage in your services? What do I need to do? 
Uh, we partner together with the senior living community, so they procure our services. Uh, they um, work to, directly with us, and then they will refer to us, uh, any seniors moving into their communities, uh, to provide that support to them. Oh, okay. So you have contracts with the providers? We do right now. Um, you know, the, the goal is within the next couple of years, we'll take this B to C to be able to offer to everybody that's in that position. Um, you know, and there's also those, those families that need help after maybe mom passes away. And, you know, they've got mm -hmm. the home to sell and the thing. So, you know, the vision is that will be the next step is to be able to offer our services to anybody that needs to provide that sort of support. So if now I'm listening to you live in our location and set up a phone call. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You? Just reach out. Okay, cool. Cool. I would, I'm just curious, you, you mentioned 25 years in corporate relocation. So why the shift over to senior living, especially since you have so many years experience in one profession, one aspect of it, and now you're starting anew in a way, right? Yeah, well, uh, I had an opportunity to work in the senior living space uh, a few years back and uh, really just loved it absolutely loved. I love the people in this space. I love the idea of serving uh, a customer who so desperately needs our services that we can really make a difference for them. It was just, it became, you know, passion meets purpose sort of situation. And we saw a way to go about um, providing more services to the senior to really, just to bring that corporate class relocation to the seniors moving into the communities. They deserve it. Nobody deserves it more than them, in my opinion. You know, they served us all these years and right cared for us. So it's time for us to, to do that. And what also drove me was um, the ability to build a company, a profit for purpose company. Um, we have passion around sustainability and charitable giving. We donate 10% of our real estate referral fee back to the communities for their benevolent fund to serve the seniors. Um, we brought in Move for Hunger, which is um, it's a, it's a program. Uh, they take any shelf-stable food that's not getting moved with the senior, and then um, we'll bring it back to the uh, movers. Um, warehouse, they weigh it, and we bring it to the local food bank, and we keep track of how much food we collect for the community and they get to report on that. So at the end of the year, we give them a check uh, for their benevolent fund or charity of choice. And we tell them how many pounds of food went to the local food bank, thanks to their residents moving in. And we also um, ensure that the discard and donate services that are used, bring anything that can be repurposed to a charitable organization, not a landfill. So it's really fun, Julie, to be able to um, create this profit for purpose company where we get to do things that, you know, in a typical corporate environment, I couldn't really bring that to corporate relocation. And so um, we just feel so fortunate to serve this market. I love it. I love senior living. And for the very many reasons uh, you mentioned in that it draws people like you to this business, people who are uh, truly, truly care. That may sound cliche, but it, time and time and time again, the people that I meet and have met in the last, you know, many, many years, they just, you know, love the business. I love the people in the business. Uh, we're, we're drawn to one another um, with, from a good place, you know, yes. and uh, so I get political or anything, but, you know, in, in the world, um, I guess, anytime that, you know, we, we look out and find, see what's happening, right? Especially now with so much, um, so much, you know, negative and, and uh, uh, people at war and, and so many, so many things uh, to focus in on, you know, how can I help? How can I help? Sometimes, you know, I, I know I feel uh, helpless and like, oh my gosh, what, what can I do? What can I do? And if we all um, leaned in uh, and, and focused in on where, where we can help and look at senior living, look at the people in senior living, uh, who are constantly day in, day out, day in, day out doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, you know, that's what really continues to drive us in, mm -hmm. in this business and look forward to uh, some, some really great years of rebuilding going through yes. COVID and, you know, getting, getting our community staffed up and getting our 
uh, residents and new residents moved in successfully, safely, happily, so that they we get uh, recommendations and referrals in the first 90 days. We don't have the move outs, right? Yep. Is there anything, um, Maureen, any advice or um, anything else for people that's out there to help make a move successful? I, I think just this creating the awareness that it's, it is stressful, right? I think like just, I think we all, you know, get in our zones. And I, I think that mm -hmm. we talk to the seniors all the time and we hear what they're going through and we, we listen and we cry with them sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like bringing that awareness back that death, divorce, relocation, this is really stressful and they'll get through it. Um, but let's provide them with all the support we can, the empathy, um, and just creating that awareness again that um, they deserve a corporate class move. They deserve all the support that we can give them. And it will pay off in spades because when they show up at the community, um, you know, I think that um, they're not showing up doubting their decision. Um, they're showing up with feeling loved and cared for as they walk in the door. And I think that's the goal behind everything that everybody is doing right now, right? Um, and, and I'm um, so thankful for the opportunity to talk with you, Julie. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to serve this industry, this business, senior living. I do love it. I'm really passionate. And so is my um, co-founder, uh, Lisa Burns, super passionate about this space and, and just feel honored to be, um, to be in it. Well, we're glad you are. We're glad you are, Maureen. Thank you so much for spending so much time with me in three episodes of Grow Your Occupancy podcast. And I look forward to staying connected and hearing many, many success, success stories and have you on again to tell us of the wonderful things that you're seeing uh, this year, 2022 and beyond. And make it a great day. Awesome. Thanks so much, Julie. Thanks.